Touchdown Coliseum, the Clemson Tigers get a visit from a Big South foe. The Radford Highlanders are in, in a Saturday afternoon battle. And hi, friends, and welcome aboard, along with Kelly Gramlich, Pete Hannity with you. Not only a Big South, though, but the team picked to win that conference this year, the Radford Highlanders. They certainly are a tough opponent, to say the least, and they do a great job beyond the arc offensively. That has been a real issue for Clemson on the defensive end. The three is always important, but today it's especially important. Radford shoots 41% from beyond the arc. That's 14th nationally. Clemson just 31%, and the Tigers have struggled to defend the three. That's going to be a key this afternoon. And, of course, Mississippi State made 19 three-pointers as the Bulldogs down Clemson last week up in New Jersey. Now, this Radford team is more than just your typical mid-major, and they kind of began fueling that notion all the way back to last year. But earlier this season, they got a victory down in Austin, Texas, a place, Kelly, you're familiar with, when they went in and knocked off a nationally ranked long. Longhorns folks. They held Texas to just five made threes, beat the Longhorns 62-59 to 59 on their home floor. First ever win for Radford against a ranked team. Then they went into ACC country prior to that and beat Notre Dame. They did. They rebounded the ball really well against Notre Dame. Another low possession game. They're obviously not afraid of the big stage. And they are now 3-33 and all time against the ACC. All of this for this year was fueled at the end of last season. That was in the Big South Championship game. Carly Jones, the winner for the title against Liberty. And Radford had themselves their third Big South Championship, a Highlanders team that would then go on and win their first ever NCAA tourney game. And they beat Long Island University in the first four. Well, Carly Jones, among others, have returned to the roster this year. And he comes in in his second year in uniform for these Highlanders, leading them in scoring. What a shot you just saw earlier from Carly Jones, the Big South freshman of the year last year. He's taken his game to another level. Averaged about 12 points per game last season, 16 this year, and two games where he scored 20 or more. He is going to fuel that offense for Radford today. And then, of course, for Clemson, the story is Eli Thomas with Marquise Reed out. Eli Thomas is the go-to guy for the Tigers. He's eighth nationally and first in the league in field goal percentage, hitting nearly 70% of his shots, 18 points last time out against Mississippi State. And these last three games, it feels like Eli's back on track. He's healthy. He's ready to go. He's averaging 17 points per game over the Tigers' last three contests. Mike Jones has done a nice job turning things around at Radford in his eighth season. He says he didn't think it would take seven years to finally win that Big South title like they did last year, but he's got it going now. He's got a very solid team, and thus they are picked to win it again this year. He is the son of a former ABA player, his dad, Jimmy. Had a long career in that league. And Brad Brownell, well, a win today ties him for second all-time at Clemson with Bill Foster as the Tigers head coach chases another victory at the helm. And looking to build on his overall mark, he's getting close to 325 career wins. And one thing to, to notice here as the starting lineups take the court, Clyde Trapp getting the start for the injured Marquise Reed. He came off the bench in Clemson's game against Mississippi State, but he's moved into the starting lineup today. Brownell, 155 victories at the helm of Clemson, now in his ninth season. Opening tip, Eli Thomas to jump against Maudau Sala, and the Tigers will have it first. You see Amir Sims run the ball down. We just heard his sister do a wonderful rendition of the national anthem. What a great job she did. Scora. Sims thought about it. Pie Trap getting the start today, and... Tucked in it is, it'll go the other way. And that's a great extra pass by Amir Sims. That's the kind of offense you want. David Starr drew the defense, hit Sims, and he made he made the right play there. Just want to have that knockdown from Clyde Trapp. Sims, though, with the hot hand last week against Mississippi State when he had that career-high 23. I have a feeling the coaches are going to tell him in the future maybe be a little more selfish and go ahead and take the shot. He did hit four threes against Mississippi State, so we'll see if he goes back to the three today. Long-range shooter, and the Tigers giving attention to Caleb Tanner with the ball. Shot clock at 10. There's Jones. Solid all-around player for them, although not a good three-point shooter. Polite driving the lane. The battle inside for the rebound. Knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Sala. It'll go the other way. And you see Radford with that lack of size. Polite is their foreman, and he's about six high. He can really rebound the basketball, but Radford's going to have to find a way to score points in the paint today with a, with a significant size disadvantage. Well, as far as rebounding goes, Radford this year, when they've out-rebounded teams or been right there with them, it's been a, a win for them as that one falls off. And look at Jones fly in. When they've been out-rebounded, they're 0-3. So their record overall, 6-3, and and that tells a big story about them. And a lot of that is preventing the opponent from grabbing offensive rebounds. There's a huge 
nice block from Eli Thomas on the defensive end. Eli Thomas a year ago, of course he had nearly 80 blocks. That's his 12th of the season. Tigers trying to generate some offense. They've been struggling on the offensive end, and Thomas in the scramble. Scar then Jones. There's Trap. Scar the battle inside, and we'll get the foul called, and that'll go against Maudo Sala, and that'll be the first in the game on either team. And here's the block from Eli Thomas on that previous play. Pin the ball on the backboard. And Clemson started the break. And then kind of a scrum for the ball here. Clyde Trapp misses the bunny. David Scara gathers himself and draws the foul. Notice earlier, though, in that possession, Clemson tried to go to Eli Thomas. There were three Radford defenders around him. That's going to be a point of focus for Radford. You don't want to let Eli Thomas get easy looks. Scara, percentage-wise, the Tigers' best three-point shooter at 44%. From the line coming into the game, 61%. But he knocks down those two, and the Tigers with the early lead. And without Marquise Reed, Clemson needs Scara to look for his shot more offensively. I think he did that against Mississippi State. He had 12 points last time out for Clemson. Sala on the baseline. There's Clyde Trapp going up, pulling down the rebound. Scara for Thomas. And a second foul inside of the Highlanders. Both have come against their largest of the big men they have, the 6'8 Sala. Excellent ball movement on that fast break there for the Tigers. A cross-court pass to Scar. He didn't have the look, but credit Eli Thomas, who had great position inside and demanded the ball from Scar. Elijah Thomas, among the things he's been doing well this year, he's gotten healthier free throws. Coming in at 67% on the season. And as you might expect, quickly a substitution at center, Devontae Holland, a 6'7", 240-pound junior checking into the ball game. And really, there's not a whole lot of difference in their numbers between him and Salah. They each rebound about the same, four and a half a game, and each scores about five points a contest. Four free throws, and the Tigers have the 4 nothing advantage. That's an area that Eli Thomas has really improved, and he took his time there at the line, taking a couple deep breaths, and it paid off. Polite getting off balance, and once again, impacting that shot was Eli Thomas. Tigers looking to push the pace. Talked about Scarra's prowess beyond the arc, and that time Polite stepping up and coming up with his eighth block of the season. It'll stay on this end with 21 on the shot clock. Mitchell was just a second late with that pass, and here's the second block from Eli Thomas. But in transition, if Mitchell had, had knew, you can't really tell because he didn't have eyes in the back of his head, but Scarra was wide open in transition. Just missed him by a second for an open three. Only player I remember who had eyes in the back of his head, at least, was described this way, was Larry Bird. Uh, that's the only one I think we could ever uh, perhaps suggest that. I think that's a safe, yeah, yeah. that's a safe analysis there. His ability to pass. Now another opportunity for Trapp. No, Thomas inside to beat the shot clock. Good recovery that time. Clyde Trapp missed everything, but there was Eli Thomas. Tigers lead 6-0. And Fields that time going to be called for the travel. Bradford coming into the game. They don't turn it over that much. 11.1 a game. And here's the miss from Clyde Trapp, but... Give Clyde Trapp an assist right into Eli Thomas's hands for an easy two. Radford is really struggling to find good looks right now. They look small out there. Clemson is playing a bigger lineup. Radford can't get many open looks. Trapp looking for Thomas, but good job to step in front of it by the Steels leader, Polite, for this Radford team. He now has 18 on the season. Holland giving off to the point guard, Travis Fields, and that ball was bumped, but we're going to get a, it looked like just a kick. I don't believe there was an infraction on the play. So they'll reset the shot clock to 20. John Newman didn't get the start today, but the freshman checking in who replaced Clyde Trapp. Brad Brownell saying in his news conference ahead of this game yesterday, the perimeter defense just has to get better, and it begins with effort. I mean, frankly, that's where there was a big-time deficit against Mississippi State. Maybe that's why the Bulldogs made all those threes. And Clyde Trapp is one of the more athletic guards on the roster, and I think Coach Brownell went with a defensive lineup to start with Trapp. That guy will shoot it from anywhere on the court. Caleb Tanner, he makes a lot of them, 49% beyond the arc. He was the big story in their win up in South Bend against Notre Dame, and he strikes for their first points. Clemson fans remember Gabe DeVoe from a year ago. Think Gabe DeVoe when Caleb Turner has the ball. He can shoot it from anywhere on the floor. He has the ultimate green light. 
Mascara, the Tigers' best from beyond the arc. Can't get the bounce. Battle for the rebound. And Trey Jemison, who just checked in, will be called for his first personal in the ballgame. Look how far Turner is off the three-point line here. No problem. Just launch it from way off the line. Clemson has to make sure they have a hand in his face at all times. Even just a little a little glimmer of daylight on that play right there, he's going to let it fly. You see the battle of the backcourts, and again, Tanner, a guy who really hits the threes. We noted, give credit to Jones, he does his scoring without hitting the threes. He's only made three of them this year. There is Holland down low, battling the freshman. Jemison sneaks back door, can't get the roll. Polite, and he'll bring it back out. And now away from the ball, we've got a whistle, and a travel is going to be called, and... Jerry Heater, our official, had to battle Brad Brownell to make that call. Timeout on the court. Tigers by three. What was that initial conversation like with Coach Brownell when you say you want to come back? He was very excited, actually. He was very excited, and I, I wasn't sure what his reaction was going to be. <laughs> but uh, he was very excited, and he said, David, I want you back. David Scara, the Tigers graduate forward and a player who, of course, has made a big impact on this year's team. He spoke with Ashley Hodge. We'll have the full interview for you coming up at the half. Of course, he's transferred in from Valparaiso in his second year playing games. And what a big re-addition it was because he was off to play back in his home country professionally but had a change of heart. Coach Brownell, very pleased that Scara chose to come back. And we know what he brings defensively, but he has become more of a scorer this year, averaging nearly eight points per game on the offensive side of the ball. And really is charged with helping Eli Thomas inside crash those boards, although that's what he showed last year. And came in and played some good defense and got boards. Rejection that time. Trapp was trying to drive, and last touch by the Tigers. It'll go the other way. And that time Clyde Trapp made his mind up before he knew where his teammate was. So he attacked, and he thought that Amir Sims was going to be right behind him. Sims rotated, and you get an unforced turnover there by the Tigers. And John Newman... Trapp setting up the backcourt now and defending against a good three-point shooting team. And that'll be a key thing to watch here in various stretches in the ball game today. Polite. Count it. And he's fouled. And boy, that's the thing that'll just make Brad Brownell roll his eyes. Elijah Thomas, he's going to commit his fouls, but you don't want to see him do it 15 feet from the basket. You never want to see Eli Thomas commit a foul outside the paint. If he's going to foul inside and he's going to pick up a few, that's fine. But he has one foot in the lane and he's picking up that foul. That's not what you want to see if you're Coach Brownell. A good play by Polite. He's an undersized big man, but he finds his way to score. First team all Big South players shoots just 59% from the free throw line, but he knocks down that one, a three-point play. And now a 6-0 run by Radford after the Tigers began the game with a 6-0 lead. And Radford knows that Clemson is without Marquis Street, without one of their primary ball handlers. So they're applying a little token pressure, three-quarter court, just to see if they can force Clemson into some mistakes and make them uncomfortable offensively. The attention you'd mentioned that Thomas is going to draw, you figure it'll help out someone like Scara, and so does the backboard. You'll take a three any way you can get it. And Scara, he's shooting 44% from three. He doesn't need the backboard most of the time, but that time using the glass to convert a three. Jones running the show. They use both him and Fields as a point guard, but he can also stop and pop just like that. Carly Jones, he's a second-team preseason All-Big South player. He was a freshman of the year in that conference last year. Out of Cincinnati, he came out of nowhere. No one knew who he was or what he could possess, but he had a fine freshman season, and here he is as their leading scorer. Scar and the Tigers look to answer. You have the size mismatch as he worked in on Tanner. And there's Sims looking to continue his good work from last week. And the rebound by Devontae Holland. Here comes Radford looking to take their first lead in the early going. Radford has struggled to get anything going in transition. Clemson's getting back on defense and preventing Radford from really capitalizing in the fast break game, which is good. Radford has to is forced to sit here and run a set. Polite driving on Sims. Holland, baseline jumper, and there's Scar. Ooh, Trap just missed Eli. Eli he had his hand up. He's calling for it. And Holland recovering just in time for the Highlanders. Trap. And now Newman from the free throw line. Gets that one to wiggle on in there. 
John Newman averaging under two points a game for this Clemson team, but in the absence of Marquise Reed, it's guys like that they are going to have to step up. That's a really good sign for Clemson. Newman has struggled to score as of late. He played well in those first two games for Clemson, but he is a freshman. He's still adjusting. It's always a good sign for a young player when you see that first shot go in. That's Carly Jones. Runs into the big players, and he'll travel, so that's what two in the last few minutes on the clock for Radford getting a travel call against him. The bank is open and here's another look at that Scara three. Just kiss it off the glass. Obviously we know Scara meant to do that. We know that. And then here's Carly Jones nice creating some separation there for a pull up. And as we've said with Carly Jones, he can fill it up. He has two games this year where he scored over 20. So he's one to watch for the Highlanders. Radford showing some full court pressure. Leroy Butts on the floor for the first time. You see him crossing midcourt. And a near steal that time, and indeed taken away by Fields. Giving to Hicks, feeding Holland. And from behind, Hunter Tyson with the rejection. Hunter Tyson coming out of nowhere and swatting that ball into the stands. And here's the steal earlier. Fields just picked Clyde Trapp's pocket. We haven't seen much Shelton Mitchell. We've seen a lot of Clyde Trapp right now, not much Mitchell. And there's Hunter Tyson coming from behind and knocking that ball out of bounds. Just the third block of the year for Tyson, but it's 6-8, and with the hops that he has, he'll pick up his fair share. Whistle away from the ball. And we've got a infraction against the Highlanders, a three-second call. We've got three first-year players out there for Clemson right now, first year of the program, in White, Newman, and Tyson, a sophomore in Trap and David Scarra. So a very young lineup out there for Clemson right now. Newman with the ball running the point. Shelton Mitchell with an extended breather on the bench, and that could be to maybe preserve him. You just get the feeling this one's going to be a game that's not decided until deep into the second half. So the Tigers playing without their two very experienced guards at this stage. That one taken out of the air by Donald Hicks, and he is a big return to the lineup for them. After missing the past three games, he's one of their key veterans who had a leg injury that kept him out. Feed inside, not a bad idea from Holland, but he overshoots the target, Bucks. And Radford turning it over again. Both teams now, Radford now with five turnovers, excuse me, Clemson with four. A little sloppy in the early going, and frankly, a lot of unforced turnovers. I don't think that the perimeter defense has been that exceptional where you're forcing Clemson and forcing Radford into turnovers. A lot of mistakes by young guards early on. Josiah Jeffers about to check in. Highlanders last year when they made the NCAA tourney, it was their third Big South championship. Their first in a good while. More of that full court pressure, and let's see how much that impacts the Tigers. You notice that Mitchell was back in that time because Brad Brownell, the last thing he wants is to give Radford some quick opportunities in the backcourt to steal and score. And now, this time, a whistle away from the ball, and the illegal screen is going to be called against Hunter Tyson. Timeout on the court, Tigers by three. Brad Brownell says once Elijah Thomas got healthy, and that's over the past couple of weeks, he would be back to his old self, and he's showing that he is. He really has. Good defensive plays early on here, blocking a shot, altering a shot. And then he's been rebounding the ball well on the offensive end. And as we said earlier, these last three games, it looks like Eli Thomas has felt healthier. He's obviously playing as, as a healthier player. 17 points per game over the last three. That's what you need to see from Eli Thomas. And without Marquise Reed, Eli Thomas is your best player on the floor. You've got to find a way to get him the ball. Three double-doubles so far this season for the Tigers' fifth-year senior out of Dallas, Texas. And you would suppose today is a good opportunity for that rebound-wise because you should be able to have an advantage inside against a smaller team. Fields sees the double-team come. Got six out on the wing. Their top three-point threat at 54%, but he misses his first attempt at the ball game. And Shelton Mitchell with the rebound. Mitchell was going coast to coast. Fields nearly took that one away from Newman. Tyson from way downtown. And White, a great job to knock that one away from Salah, who's checked back in with those two fouls. 
And the Tigers recycle the shot clock. That's what Javin White brings to this lineup. He's a tenacious rebounder. That was a great play to keep the ball alive. Mitchell with a size advantage on the 5-10 fields. There's Tyson baseline. The freshman has it knocked away as Jojia Jeffers, a guard. That's Radford to get the ball back. Quick pass underneath. Butts defended by Tyson. Ooh, a little fadeaway. That might remind his coach, Mike Jones, of what his dad Jimmy used to do in the ABA when he pulls up the old film of that. A nice shot by the sophomore Butts out of D.C. Back to a one-point game. Is that one going to count? It will. And the foul is called. Shelton Mitchell ahead of the line. Nice job by Shelton at the elbow. And here's Butts with that turnaround. He's only averaging less than two points per game, but that was smooth inside. And then here's Shelton Mitchell drawing the foul on the mid-range and, of course, getting a beneficial role. And I think that's something that Clemson really needs to see today is Shelton Mitchell get going, especially early. He only had nine points against Mississippi State. He was three for 16 from the field. So he's getting good looks, but he's got to step up in terms of production with Reed out. Mitchell, 80% from the line this year. I said elbow. I was actually shielded by the official. He was more straight on. But, yes, that free throw jumper from mid-range. And the Tigers with the... Three-point play, build the lead to four. They've been up by as many as six here early on. Fourth ever meeting against the Highlanders of Radford. Uh, Radford, Virginia, not far at all from where Virginia Tech's located in the southwestern part of the Commonwealth. Butts, another fadeaway, and that one over Thomas. Wow, who is this guy? His numbers don't jump off the page here, but so far he... Looks like he's ready to go pro. Hey, when your number's called, you got to be ready. He's only playing about five minutes per game. But in a game against William & Mary this year, he did go off for nine points. So he can score it. And he's got a pretty left-handed jumper. Nice idea, but Thomas unable to find the handle. Radford trying to tie the ball game up or get their first lead of the game. And the way they shoot the three-pointer, that is always an option. Fields through the defense, tried to scoop it. Nothing doing. There's Newman. Bodies flying down at the baseline. And the foul will be called on Polite. Let's see if Eli Thomas is okay. He took a nasty spill. He, he's back up on his feet. Here's the foul that was just called. Eli Thomas taking a, an extended arm from Polite and uh, drawing the call there, Pete. That's what I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a little, little acting maybe involved, but hey, whatever gets the job done. I was, I was not going to say something about him maybe taking a drama class this <laughs> semester. I was not going to say that. Trap again from long range. Having a tough day so far as the Tigers sophomore. And Jones will bring it across midcourt. Jones halfway down the lane. Probably couldn't believe what an opportunity he had to scoop that one up and in. And we're tied at 14. Other end. Mitchell nearly losing it as Hicks was scrapping. Mitchell from way outside and Shelton Mitchell draining the tray just 30 percent so far in the year but he is a much better shooter than that the Tigers needed that one and yeah he shot about 37 38 percent last year so you know he's a better shooter than its numbers indicate Clemson just two for nine from three it seemed like there was a lid on the basket until that one I don't know if Polite was expecting that pass but two out of two so far and missing that one badly and perhaps Trapp got a finger on that one Clemson trying to run, trying to push. That time Radford got back in transition, but I know Coach Brownell has told Shelton Mitchell, get out, let's go, let's run. Amir Sims can't get that one to go. He shoots 40% beyond the arc, but a slow start after that big ball game last week against Mississippi State. And we've talked about how Radford shoots 41% from three, but they don't take that many shots from three. They're efficient, but they don't take that many. Clemson is the one right now that's taking a lot of shots from beyond the arc. Radford, not as much. From the corner, it's Hicks, and that's what he does. We told you, 54% from beyond the arc, and he ties us up at 17 apiece. Right on cue, as Radford's only attempted three threes until that one from Hicks. And as you said earlier, Pete, they're glad to have him back in the lineup after a calf injury. Yeah, he'd missed their past three ball games, and they come in having lost back-to-back -back games for the first time since last season. And Thomas that side battling the much smaller fields, who knocked it away. In a 17-all game. We thought it would be a game of the backcourt. Radford's got a good one. Tigers have their work cut out for them. Harley Jones, great job of using his body on that drive to shield the defender. And then there's Shelton Mitchell knocking down the big three. We're tied up in Little John.
Let's take another look at a previous Clemson offensive possession. You're going to see some action here where Javen White's supposed to set a screen for Hunter Tyson, but if you pause it here, Hunter Tyson's coming off that screen. He needs to take his defender lower. Take him to the block so you give your big man a better chance to set a solid screen. You see here, he doesn't take him low enough. Javen White feels the need to take that extra step. And boom, he's called for a foul. Hands to the head. He knows he committed a foul. Hunter Tyson has to take his defender deeper into the paint. Good points indeed. Tigers will inbound with just 10 on the shot clock. And you see some instruction going on over on the bench. Mitchell, and he'll be called for the travel. So we're seeing an abundance of walking calls here in the early going. And we, ju we just saw that Javen White play. We saw that play from Shelton Mitchell. It's mental right now. Those are unforced errors. That's nothing that's Radford's doing that's forcing Clemson to make those mistakes. It's purely mental. Teams have combined for 13 turnovers. That was the seventh in the Tigers. Radford has six points off of turnovers to none for Clemson. Feed to Holland. Underneath. No, but the follow by Polite. That's why he is a first-team All-Big South player. Really athletic mid-major guy. He is, and he's always in the right place at the right time crashing the boards. He's had five games this year with 11 or more rebounds, and he's just six foot five. That's tremendous. First lead change we've had. Mitchell, and he drains it from right of the lane. Shelton Mitchell coming through with some big points here in the opening half, and we're tied back up this time at 19. And Mitchell knows he has to bring his offense today. Without Marquise Reed, Amir Sims is not on the floor. Shelton Mitchell's got to fill it up, and he's being more aggressive on offense. Trap defending. Jones has a size advantage. Jones off the glass. And really nice job of Jones not letting Eli Thomas uh, come over and have any impact on that play. He's very crafty, and he hung in the air just long enough to get that shot off. When you're 6'1 and you average 16 points per game, you have to be creative inside against big men. Torture Radford in off back-to-back -back losses for the first time since last February. They fell at James Madison, then at Ohio, but... Here they are hanging with an ACC team once again, having already gotten a victory at Notre Dame earlier this year. Good job by Trapp to knock that one out of bounds. And here's a play from earlier for Radford on the offensive end. Whew, that screen right on John Newman, who took a, took a hit from that screen. And then Ed Polite with the follow, getting up in and getting that rebound and putting it back. Mike Jones before the game said the key for them rebounding is they just have to compete on the boards. I think it's safe to say Polite competed that time. Stop and pop for Fields. Only gets the glass. Here comes Trapp. He did. And when you're undersized like Radford, it's timing your jump and finding the right time to go grab those rebounds. And again, with Ed Polite, with how he rebounds at 6'5", he's so good at timing his jump. Thomas. And he overshoots on the mid-range jumper. Jones and crew try to build. Their biggest lead of the afternoon. Underneath Thomas, and it just rolls off. But Eli will be called for the foul, and that'll be number two on him. And that's huge for Radford to draw that second foul on Eli Thomas. But look at this attack from Carly Jones. Look how creative he is with the ball, just finding a way to get the shot up around the big defender in Eli Thomas. He's only 6'1", Eli's 6'9", but that does not stop Carly Jones from being effective around the rim. Jones out of Cincinnati's Aiken High School. And that free throw going down. His first attempt of the game. So Eli Thomas, we told you, picked up that second foul, goes to the bench. Not only, of course, is there a depth issue in the backcourt with the Marquis Reed injury, but Malik Williams still not available. The sophomore 6'8 forward. So the Tigers thin in the front court as well. The good news for Clemson against a team like Radford that doesn't have much size, you can afford to play Javen White at the five and Sims at the four. You don't have to play two bigs, two guys over 6'8". But it's still obviously a negative to not have Eli Thomas on the floor. Of course, the top big man for Radford. Now to Sala going out early with a couple of personal fouls. That one an unforced error by Sims. He was about to cut to the basket. And the Tigers give it up again. We mentioned Amir Sims against Mississippi State up in New Jersey just last week. 23 points. He hit four threes. He was really aggressive. He's only taken three shots today. We haven't seen that aggressiveness from him. Polite. Not a bad three-point shooter at all, though that's not his forte, but it's 6'5". If he were in a major conference, he's got the ability. He probably could have been in a Power 7 conference. He'd probably be more of a three-point shooter. Sims almost made the steal, and then 
is able to scrap and take it away. Devin Hutchinson looked like he was going to have it. Good job by Amir Sims coming into the ball game. Just four steals on the year, but a big one there. Tigers look to get within one or tie it up. Trap again. And that one goes down. Clyde Trapp had not looked good from beyond the arc. 32% of the season, he hits his first of the day. And Trapp caught that one in rhythm, didn't think about it, went right up and took that three, and that's a great sign for Clemson. Two ugly misses early on for Clyde Trapp, but that one was pure from the right wing. So we're again tied. Polite on Sims. Tanner driving up and under, and a real nice move by Caleb Tanner, the senior out of Floyd, Virginia. And a guy who was a really good high school scorer, but in college he's been known more as a set-up three-pointer. With Turner, you have to guard him so far away from the three that sometimes when you close out, he can get that first step on you and take the ball to the hoop. Good scrappy play by Clyde Trapp. Didn't get dejected after missing that one. With how Clemson shot the ball so far, just 33% from the floor, you've got to get some offensive rebound, and so that's huge from Trapp to give Clemson another possession. Coming up on three and a half to go in our opening half. Mitchell, step back. And Shelton Mitchell, that'll go for two, but another big bucket by the Tigers senior. And Mitchell now in double figures, first player on either side with 11 points in the game. Always a good thing when you score, but you know how I feel about the long two, Pete. You know how I feel. Take one more step back, you get one more point for it. Tigers extend a couple of taller players out high. Hutchinson gives to Polite, coming up on five on the shot clock. Let's see what Jones does with it. Fade away with Sims in his face. Holland battling for the rebound, and Hutchinson able to save it for the Highlanders off a of trapped hand. Out of bounds, it'll go. you got to hustle no matter who you're playing, and the Tigers showing that today. This, here's the steal from Amir Sims all over the floor, grabbing that rebound and heading out for the break. And then, boom, Clyde Trapp knocks down a big three. We're all tied up in Little John. Tied up here late in the first half. Just the fourth meeting all time between the Tigers and the Highlanders of Radford out of the Big South. But there are some very deep ties between these two schools. And in fact, if you look at the 1991-92 team picture of Radford, the fellow on the extreme far left is Dr. Ron Bradley. To his left is one Donald Dick Bender, currently a Clemson assistant. He spent six years on the staff at Radford and helped Ron Bradley build a Big South championship team that they were able to win their first ever conference title and get their first ever NCAA bid in 1998. Dick Bender at the foundation of that, of course, a longtime lieutenant of Brad Brownell. And Ron Bradley elevated the head coaching job at Radford, succeeding a fellow you may have heard of named Oliver Purnell, who had his first head coaching job in D1 there. And that time it's taken away by White as Polite lost the dribble. Scora, finger roll, and one. Clemson hasn't had many easy looks tonight, but that one getting out in transition. And David Scara using his long stride here to make up a lot of ground. One, two, boom, finger roll, and the foul. Scara back to the line, and David Scara so far, two out of two. And our scoring going today on foul shots. Can't get the ball to go down that time. So a second lead change here in the opening half of play, but Oliver Purnell in the late 80s. Was at Radford. This is in the early days of the Big South. There's before that conference even had a uh, automatic NCAA bid for their champion. But he had a 21 season. He turned that into a job at Old Dominion across state at his alma mater. And the travel called on Caleb Tanner. But Oliver Purnell had Ron Bradley at his side here at Clemson and at Radford. And Ron Bradley had Dick Bender at his side at Radford. Now. Bender is an assistant coach at Clemson, just like Ron Bradley used to be. Dick Bender is uh, as much of a, uh, a, a basketball and just an all-around sports guy. Just a great guy and a great guy to talk to about sports. You can just tell he's an athlete through and through. The classic Jim Rat who used to, in his hometown of the Frostburg, Maryland area, used to ask the high school coach to give him the key to the gym so he could drive there in a snowstorm, you know, when school wasn't in. His other travel is called. We've had an abundance of those on both sides in the first half. But, uh, Dick Bender, one of those guys that everyone in coaching knows and you value. And, and as play goes on here, a quick story. Folks may not realize it, but even though Dick Bender arrived 
when Brad Brownell got here after the 2010 season, and Trevor Booker had already finished up his eligibility. Dick Bender did a lot of gym sessions with Trevor Booker, and a foul is going to be called on Mitchell to help Booker get ready for the upcoming NBA draft, even though he had never been an assistant at Clemson while Booker was here, but built a good relationship with just because Bender had arrived at Clemson and did what he does, was hanging out at the gym and did a lot of that. So here's the foul moments ago, and that is now five on each team. Foul called on Sheldon Mitchell, just trying to deny that pass, and he asked the ref, where's the foul? Where's the foul? A little hand check, but not sure if that was a foul, especially that far away from the basket. Tigers are led by as many as six. Islanders' largest lead was three, and now they move back in front as Travis Fields knocks down the tray. He's a 50% shooter from long range. We told you the top of the telecast, 41% beyond the arc. This Radford team, top 15 in NCAA in that category. It's a big part of their game. Sims have they gotten too far under. I think he was trying to feed Scar, but now Mitchell. Left elbow this time. Shelton Mitchell picked a good day to be feeling it. Dozen points for the Tigers senior. Came in averaging just under 14 a game. He's done a lot of his damage from the mid-range. I think he feels that he can get his shot almost every time down the floor from that area. Very polite knocks that one down for a tray. And that is our fifth lead change and our third here in the last minute or so on the clock as we're coming up on 40 left. Radford doesn't shoot that many threes, but they're very efficient. Next time a Radford player shoots, watch his footwork. They get their feet around and they square up almost every time. It's all about the footwork, and that's why they're so efficient. Mitchell's going to try one from downtown, and Shelton Mitchell. That's another three-pointer for him, having a big first half. He's two out of two beyond the arc. He's got 15 points to lead all scorers. Tigers needed that from Shelton Mitchell. He's answered the call. Like you said, Pete, he's yet to miss a field goal and has nearly half of Clemson's points as we near the intermission. Highlanders playing for a final shot. Six lead changes in the opening half. Four coming inside of the final two minutes or so. Jones, fade away. And it bounces high off the iron. No good. And the Tigers will have a one-point lead heading into the break. Clemson this season, 5-0 and when leading at the half. The Highlanders, 2-1 and when trailing at the intermission. The kind of competitive opening half of play that we expected out of a Radford team that's got some big wins on the road so far this season. It's obvious that Radford is not afraid of the moment, not afraid of playing a Power 5 team. We're, we're in for a good one in the second half. Clemson leads 31-30. Tigers with a one-point lead on the Radford Highlanders. We're getting ready for our second half to begin here in Little John Coliseum. We welcome you back in with Kelly Gramlick, Pete Gannity with you. A Radford team that's done the things we thought they would do and the Tigers were anticipating. I'll tell you this, Carly Jones, their leading scorer, the sophomore guard who was the freshman of the year in the Big South a year ago. He's from the Cincinnati area, not far from UC or Xavier, or even Northern Kentucky or Dayton and some of those schools, Miami of Ohio, have to be wondering maybe uh, they shouldn't have uh, let him get out of town. Yeah, you probably should not have passed on Carly Jones. He's shown us that he can really score the ball today for Radford. And look at how he attacks the basket. He's so crafty inside. He's just 6'1", but he finds a way to use his body. And there's a, a mid-range jumper. He's done his damage inside. He finds a way to get around those big men, use his body to shield off defenders and score. And then this play especially, attacking the basket, challenging Eli Thomas and getting the bucket. Carly Jones with seven points for Radford in that first half. And here's Shelton Mitchell. Mitchell, 15 points for Clemson. He has been their offense in the first half. Got it going early with the mid-range. He's been very efficient from the mid-range. And then also knocking down the threes. Two threes for him on just two attempts. He's yet to miss a field goal attempt. He's six for six from the floor. A lot of that coming from the mid-range. Right. He's been tremendous. And then you see here a defensive play for Mitchell. He's denying the ball. He's denying the ball. And he's called for a foul. Not happy about that. But still, I think Coach Brownell happy with the aggressiveness on the perimeter. And Shelton Mitchell wasn't laughing just then because he thought it was funny. It was more out of uh, disbelief. And you see the battle of the backcourts. And Shelton Mitchell, note those 15 points. That moves him now within 10 of 1,000 points in his collegiate career, which began at Vanderbilt. And certainly good work by the Tiger senior. If he's able to get to that... Uh, a thousand point total it would mean a new career high for him it would be 25 points his career high is 23 and he's already obviously beyond that pace so far and Clyde Trapp after a tough start 
able to pick up on the defensive end and also showed some real scrappy play. Was able to hit a three-pointer for his lone points in the opening half, but also did some very scrappy work. A Tiger team that, like everyone else in college basketball, both those who play, we in the media, trying to figure out the new net rankings and how that works. But that shows you what they look like at this point in the season. These two teams among the top 85 out of 351 Division I programs. But all those schools that Clemson either has upcoming or has already played this year with... Bison of Lipscomb coming in here on December 30th to Little John Coliseum. And it shows you where Radford ranks as one of those mid-major teams that are up in the top 85 of these net rankings. And then, honestly, it's just very indicative of an ACC schedule. You're going to play a lot of really good teams. Look at all those teams in the top 20, Louisville, NC State, North Carolina, Duke, and Virginia. The ACC, the very unforgiving league, we know that for sure. Tigers. 11th in the ACC alone, to give you an idea, is just what Brad Brown, Ellen crew are facing once conference play begins. The first things first, trying to get win number seven on the season. And knock off the first of back-to-back -back Big South opponents. Charleston Southern's Buccaneers will be here on Tuesday night for a 7 o'clock game. Amir Sims quiet in the first half, and that one was halfway down, out of bounds. But the foul will be called against Ed Polite Jr. of Radford, and that'll be the first on either team here in half number two. And that's what Clyde Trapp brings at the two spot. He can score the ball as well as Marquise Reed, at least not yet in his career. But he's the most athletic guard on this team. He's a great defender, and he can get up and rebound. And he knows that's his role in the starting spot for Clemson. You're just joining us for a second consecutive game. Tigers without their leading scorer and their best offensive threat, Marquise Reed, still coming back from that knee spring. Thomas dribbling around defenders and a nice job to lay it up and in. And Eli Thomas surpassing 700 career points for his college days. Of course, he began at Texas A&M. From way outside, Polite count it. And there was a foul away from the ball, and that's going to go against Clyde Trapp, positioning for the rebound. And so Polite with the basket. And you see here Ed Polite with the three, and that time he slipped off the screen, and no one came out there to guard him. That's been one of the issues for Clemson, why their opponents are shooting 39% from three on the season. You have to contest every single three, especially with a team like Radford that shoots over 40% from beyond the arc. Boy, what a nice drive that was by Carly Jones, and he's getting close to double figures. So Polite and Jones, two of their top threats, delivering on that end, and Radford moves back in front, our seventh lead change. By the way, Polite with that three became in their 15th all-time in scoring at Radford. Mitchell off that good first half. Not that time, and here's Polite. Two threes for Clemson that have been in and out in the early going. And that previous play for Radford, you make the three and you get a foul call so you get the ball back. That was almost a five-point possession for Radford when they got the ball twice. Yeah, essentially it turns out just like that. Nice feed inside Holland. Bumps against Sims, but he gets the roll. A great slip by Holland and a good find. A strong finish inside. Devontae Holland, their backup center. He's able to get a bucket and get into the scoring column. And now away from the ball, there's a foul call that they're going to get Holland for the hold. And that'll be his first. And you see Holland, quick slip, a great pass by Fields. And he finishes with contact. And Radford right now on a 7-0 run over the last minute. And the four-point advantage for the Highlanders, their biggest lead in the game. Mitchell inbounding to Thomas. Mitchell to the basket underneath Sala. And coming down with it was Polite. And you saw Mitchell taking a nasty spill. Travel is what the Clemson bench was yelling. No whistle. Feed inside. Jones to Fields. And Fields ahead of the line. Nice look that time by Carly Jones, who has nearly five assists per game, even though they don't consider him their main point guard. A great look by Jones, but also a good cut by Travis Fields. He caught John Newman, who went out in the passing lane and cut back door, made himself available, drew the foul. That's a heads-up play by Travis Fields. Fields, a guy they consider was a steal when they got him to transfer over from Old Dominion. He's in his second year in their program. And that one will not go down for a fellow who shoots 84% from the free-throw line. And he is their 
leader in that regard in terms of attempts. Hicks is seven out of seven, but obviously doesn't have as many tries as Fields. But Mike Jones, their coach before the game, telling us normally they don't take rebound guys, meaning guys they recruit out of high school to go somewhere else. But he says, I, I just liked Fields so much. We had such a great relationship. I was happy to have him come to the program. And he gives his team a five-point advantage. Scar is showing some ball handling against the 6-1 Tanner. And again, without Marquise Reed, every single player out there who plays the 2-3 or 4 for Clemson is going to be called on to handle the ball in some capacity. Scara feeding Sims. And he leaves it short. Really good defense that time by Polite. And Sims has a height advantage there. That's something that he knows. You can see it on his face. He's got to be able to finish that inside. Amir Sims has yet to score in this ball game after he had that career high 23 against Mississippi State last Saturday. Tanner from out near the paw. And battling for the rebound. Foul is going to be called on Polite. And that's big. That's going to be the third on him. And he really was far from the action. And Coach Mike Jones not thrilled with that call. Put his hands on his head. That's a tough one for Radford. Polite, he hasn't done that much offensively. 11 points, 4 for 6, 8 rebounds. He's nearing another double-double. This would be huge if this is, in fact, his third foul, which I believe it is. And they're taking a look to see if it has any type of flagrant nature to it. We'll take a look ourselves. The old the wraparound that they're calling this right. year. We've seen Elijah Thomas impacted by that a couple of times. We've seen Eli Thomas called for a flagrant in a similar foul to that. We didn't believe it was a flagrant, but we've seen that called earlier in the season. And Polite was just trying to use a swim move, get around Eli Thomas. AJ Desai and Lee Castle, two of our officials today, taking a look. Here's another look from a different angle. And Amir Sims ended up on the floor, but... I don't think he ended up on the floor because of Ed Polite Jr. I think Sims just fell down in that motion. I'd be very surprised if that's called a flagrant. So we're going to say it's a normal foul. That's the right call. And that is the correct call. But you put an asterisk next to it because that is a couple of quick ones here in the second half on Polite. And he, now the game has three. And you see what they were looking over. It's the hook and hold is the new rule that they're trying to enforce this year. So, Polite has a seat, and that could be big. It came with just under 17 and a half to go here in our second half. Leroy Butts on the floor in place of him with a couple of big baskets in the first half. I think Mitchell was thinking Thomas was going to cut, but there's Butts coming away with a steal for the Highlander. Miscommunication there. He thought that Eli Thomas was going to cut more towards the basket. That didn't happen. Butts too strong that time. Mitchell. Thomas on the drive, contact, let's see. And we're going to get an offensive foul against Elijah Thomas. And that'll be his third. And that's huge, much like with Ed Polite Jr., you get a foul there on Thomas. And they're calling him for extending the right arm, but he really didn't lower his shoulder. He didn't do the typical things that you would call an offensive foul when the opponent does not take a charge. So I think a, a generous call there with the foul, generous to Radford in some ways. But Eli Thomas obviously frustrated with himself. Radford looking to build on this 8-0 run they've put together over the past two and a half minutes. Tigers just two points coming out of the halftime locker room. Jones spins around Scara, tried to shovel it. Good recovery by David Scara. Came in with a couple of blocks on the season. Mitchell and Caleb Tanner getting hand of the ball, but also apparently made contact with Shelton Mitchell. First foul on Tanner, and now four on Radford. And there's the block from David Scarra. Carly Jones has been so crafty inside, but that time David Scarra was not having any of it. A clean block that led to a transition opportunity for Clemson, which Clemson needs to get more of those. Only two fast break points in this entire game between Radford and Clemson combined, and those two have been for Clemson. Tigers have to find a way to get out in transition. Sims getting a breather. Gavin White. Scar, the two big men out there. Tigers working the perimeter. Scara, Newman, and the battle for the rebound. White, and it's deflected off his body 
Carly Jones getting there to knock it away from Javen White. And Radford will have the ball when we return. Highlanders building a five-point lead here early in the second half. Radford Highlanders, a five-point lead. You see Ron Gersa, one of their assistants earlier in the ball game. We talked about the different connection between Radford and Clemson coaching staff. Well, Ron Gersa doesn't have a connection necessarily to the Clemson staff, but he does to Little John Coliseum. It was in this building that he coached his final game as the head coach of the University of Georgia in the NIT back in the 98-99 campaign. You may remember that was Larry Shiat's first year. The Tigers went all the way to Madison Square Garden and played for the NIT title. But Gersa, who had the task of replacing Tubby Smith at Georgia. He was in his second year as head coach, but did not return. He later went on to guide Marshall. And he's been an assistant now at Radford in his fourth season, but you would suppose when he came into the building today, perhaps that memory struck him. Maybe it didn't. I really don't know, but I found it to be an interesting tidbit. Holland, who it looked like he traveled. He's going to go off the glass and put it up and in. And in a game we've seen traveling called regularly, I do believe the officials might have let that one go. Bradford has scored 10 points in the second half. Clemson has scored two. Yes. There's a lid on the basket for Clemson right now, and Radford's playing with a lot of confidence. A 10-0 Radford run. Scar, instead of trying the three, gets the short two. Nice drive across the lane, and that breaks the dry spell for the Tigers. They're back within five. And Scar has only taken five shots tonight, including that one. I think he needs to be more aggressive. He's so efficient. He shoots a high percentage from both the field and beyond the arc. He has to score more for Clemson to get back in this one. Jones, for all that he does well, he came into the game just 3 out of 23 beyond the arc, so when he gets the ball out there, he's not a threat. And you know, the Tigers have backed off a little bit. And we've got a foul away from the ball. It's going to go against the Tigers. And they're going to get Shelton Mitchell, and again, a little bit of a look of disbelief. Meanwhile, on the previous possession for Radford, maybe they said the left foot was a pivot foot, but... Perhaps in the NBA, that might be uh, looked at it that way, more so than when you normally see traveling calls in college. That looked like a travel to me, but to the officials' credit, they've called a ton of travels tonight. So yeah. they have been pretty good in that regard. And they're surprised that that wasn't one, but that was the second personal, by the way, on Mitchell. So his second was Eli Thomas over on the bench with three, while Ed Polite, best big man for this Radford team, has three. He's on the bench. Shot clock down to two. Holland doesn't realize it. Now he does. And pretty nice shot that time for a guy who hadn't attempted a three-pointer this year. Couldn't get it to go. Mitchell passed Tanner. And the foul will be called on Holland. And on Devontae Holland, a junior out of Martinsville, Virginia, he picks up his second personal, and that's now five on Radford here in the second half. One of Shelton Mitchell's strengths is obviously attacking the basket, and he doesn't really get fancy with it. His main move that he uses all the time is a simple hesitation move. Change of direction, he slows down for a second, and then attacks strong to the left side. So he doesn't need to get fancy, but that hesitation move works well every time. Each team has gone around their respective coaches near midcourt while you see our officials. That's Jerry Heater in the middle, Lee Castle, and A.J. Desai flanking him. And they're going to review a possibility now of a technical foul. And I, I really don't know if they mean on that actual play or perhaps away from the ball. I'm assuming it's on the actual play. And perhaps Holland is being accused of doing something of a flagrant nature. It is a confusing world these days when they go to the replay, and most officials usually kind of come over and tell nice folks like us doing the game on TV what exactly they determine. But it's confusing because we're at least in the NFL when they've gone to, uh, to review a play. Normally, you'll hear the guys say the previous play is under review. Right. At times, though, they may actually detail why they're going to look at it if it's not obvious. Well, this is not obvious to us. And you're seeing a replay, and perhaps there was some pushing and shoving after the fact. Maybe now, some words. Now we're back live, and now the officials continue to discuss huh. whatever it is they just saw. Okay, so keep an eye after the play. And now they've gone back to the monitor again. So they stepped away from the monitor. And maybe they all weren't certain what they were supposed to see. So did someone push and shove someone else, or did someone say something about, okay, there we go. Jerry Heater rung up Devontae Holland. That's the first time I have seen. So Devontae Holland probably said something that uh, he would not want to say in uh, front of mom or, or, or pop or, or someone very kind and gracious. <laughs> maybe he said words that should be kept to himself. 
And now Jerry Heater and A.J. Desai are over explaining to Mike Jones. So they're calling a flagrant two language ejection against Devontae Holland. Wow. wow. <laughs> I mean, in unison we say, wow, that's very surprising. Wow. And, and Coach Mike Jones is just trying to figure out what happened over here. And so he's got to send Maldo Sala back into the game. Flagrant two, ejection because of the technical because he was talking. Yes, and A.J. Desai just came over and was trying to explain that to us. So that's, that's a big one right there. So out he goes. And I think even though Holland's going to the end of the bench, I think he's got to leave the court of play, but we'll see in a moment. And so Sala, who picked up a couple of quick personals, will come in. They're saying he has to go to the locker room. No, he I does. He's, he's got. Whenever you get a take, whenever yeah. you get ejected from a game, you've got to leave. It's just like in any other sport. So, please don't read lips at home and good. He's looking away, so you won't. And Jerry Heater, you see right there, he heard whatever magic word he had to hear. That might. That's the first we've seen in games you and I have done this year, and I can't remember the last time I saw that happen. So, a big bonus for the Tigers who earlier. Had a five-point play happen against them in the early stages of the second half. Shelton Mitchell goes to the line. And three throws now for Mitchell. Best the Tigers currently have in the active rotation at 80%. But he only makes one out of two. So you not only lose Holland, you put Shelton Mitchell on the line. Clemson gets the ball. And remember, Ed Pillai Jr. is on the bench with three fouls. Yes. And Holland was, was in there to, to play in place of Polite. So they have to go with Sala now. That's a big development for Radford, That's one that huge, I'm sure yeah. Mike Jones did not anticipate happening yeah. just a couple minutes ago. Mike Jones in his eighth season, he's won 122 games, his first head coaching job, and he admittedly says, you know, I had to grow into this job, and he thinks he brought enough talent in early as Mitchell, who, of course, was fouled in the act of shooting, got two free throws to go along with the two technical free throws. And so he's two out of three in this trip and a chance to make it a two-point game, and he will. And now add on the fact that the bonus will come they were uh Bradford was a little bit upset last week when they played at Ohio that the foul count was 21 for Radford just 13 for the home team I have a feeling uh and, and they actually put that in their game recap I wouldn't be surprised if in their game recap today uh, depending on how things play out if this moment in the game with about 14 10 to go is mentioned Tigers have a chance to tie or retake the lead and Sims will try to do it and he does and Amir Sims who's been kept scoreless to this point in the contest, picks a good time to break through. And we mentioned Radford had that five-point possession at the beginning of the half. That was a six-point possession for Clemson. Three free throws and a big three, and now Clemson has the lead in just a matter of seconds. How often will that happen anywhere else in a game this year? Very rarely. You may have seen the lone time. You'll see one team have a five-point play and another a six-point sequence in the same ball game. Eight lead changes, two in the second half. Jones responding, and that's what he does. He tells the crowd to quiet down, and another lead change, and back in front go the Highlanders. That is a big shot from Carly Jones. You can see why he's the leader of this team. Just cold-blooded right there. The crowd's into it. Clemson has the momentum, and he knocks down that jumper. Mitchell. And the rebound taken down by Leroy Butts, who now becomes a very important player. Is their front line depth has been reduced with the ejection of Devontae Holland. With both teams, their depth being tested. No Marquise Reed for Clemson. You see Holland lead the game. Foul trouble all over the place. A lot of guys who don't play that many minutes are out there right now. Butts had a couple of fadeaway jumpers in the first half. That one's not going to go. Newman defended. Mitchell and the Tigers looking to retake the lead. And knocked away and stolen by Travis Fields. Came in with a dozen on the season. I think Hicks was expecting that one. He's a good three-point shooter. Moving to his left. He knocks it down. So a 5-0 run for Radford after the Tigers had taken the lead back. This game has been a game of runs. And that is an incredibly tough shot from Hicks to hit that three off balance right in front of our broadcast position. Just a tough shot. Brad Brownell has seen enough. He doesn't want to wait for the under-12 official timeout. He calls one of his own. First one called by either team in the game. Tigers getting some energy off the Mitchell free throws. It led to this. And there's the Amir Sims three. And then Radford with the steal. They're pushing it as Fields. He finds Hicks. Look at this shot. Off balance, knocks it down. Radford leads by four. 
You see some of the folks at the scorer's table who do good work during the games, including the man in the middle, Mike Money, the Clemson Athletics Administrator, celebrating a birthday today. So happy birthday to Mike on this, the 15th of December. We didn't ask him his age. We're not going to ask his age. We're not going to guess the over in case he's wondering. But we know that soldier that he is, he is working hard on this his birthday. Tigers need to get going. They've been working hard all day, but not a lot to show for. But look at Scara. And he's allowed to hang on the rim to avoid injury. And David Scara ties us up, or I should say brings Clemson back within two at 45-43. David Scara jumping over his own teammate, jumping over Eli Thomas to get that tip dunk. Polite back on the floor, has the ball now for Radford. Remember, he's got those three personal fouls, but so does Elijah Thomas. He's returned to the lineup for Clemson. What a nice job by Travis Fields, the old Dominion transfer who was hot down the stretch of their run to the NCAA tourney last year. A beautiful mid-range jumper there. It feels like every time Clemson grabs some sort of momentum, Radford hits a big shot. And it's really been Fields or Jones, those two guards, that have stepped up their games this season. In the corner it goes, trapped. And it rattles home good as second meet made three of the ball game. <laughs> it's been an adventure from long range today for Clyde Trapp, but that was a big one there. Huge shot for Clemson. Clyde Trapp's just, still just two for six from three, but that was a big one as Clemson continues to pull back and tries to take the lead. Fields averages about 11 a game. Shakes the defender Trapp. Can't get it to rattle home. Battle for the rebound. Fields again thought about passing and said firing, and he put Radford back in front by three. Fields is such a smooth player, and that time grabbing the offensive board, faking the pass, and an easy jumper. He's played really well in the second half. Tigers led by one at the break. Radford picked to win the Big South after they made a march to a title last year. They were picked in the lower third of the Big South a season ago. This year, they're picked to win it with so many players back from that NCAA team. Good job by Sims to get the offensive rebound. And Trapp had the extra pass there, but he's feeling it. And that's a shot you take when you've just made a three. Nothing wrong with that shot, and that ball was in and out, just like a few of those free threes have been for Clemson in this second half. You see the numbers as far as offensive rebounds go. They've been important. Sims unable to finish. There's the deflection out to Trapp. Yet another offensive rebound. Tigers getting close to 10 of those here in our second half of play. Radford's hanging tough on the boards, but Clemson with nine offensive rebounds now. Radford just five. The Tigers have found a way to create second chance opportunities for themselves. Thomas. And the foul is going to be called on Salah. That'll be his third. And they're starting to add up for Radford. They have now put the Tigers in a bonus situation, the seventh on the Radford team. Check out this play from David Scarra. Timing his jump perfect, perfectly, jumping over his own teammate and Eli Thomas to get the tip slam as Radford leads Clemson by three. David Scarra getting it done. There is focus, and then there is focus from both dad and daughter right there. You know, one day he's going to tell those two that you were at a game that had a five-point play and a six-point sequence at it. And back in December of 2018 when Radford played Clemson. And the Tigers right now looking up at a three-point deficit. These folks having a good time. One of a handful of... December home games for this Tigers team. The next one Tuesday night, 7 p.m. against Charleston Southern. Hope you can make it here. Then on the 30th, Lipscomb coming in out of the Atlantic Sun Conference. And taking on Clemson just before New Year's. Elijah Thomas at the free throw line, hitting the first of a couple of free throw opportunities. Eli coming into the ball game 67%. And so far this afternoon, he's now three out of three. And with how the schedule worked this year, Pete, for some reason, this is Clemson's first weekend home game. So you see a really good crowd in here in Little John as fans have been able to make their way for the game here on this Saturday. Polite the rebound off the miss. That was the 900th in the career of the senior out of Lanham, Maryland, Ed Polite. Really good player for this Radford team. He'd probably be a front runner for the Big South Player of the Year, but there's a player in that league who leads the nation in scoring, Chris Clemens of Campbell, who... You figure he's averaging over 30 a game is going to be tough to beat. No, that time for Salah. Newman pulls it down. Here come the Tigers looking to tie or go back in front. Sims. And he banks it in with a hand in his face. 
And Amir Sims, he has to be more aggressive, as we've said, with Marquise Reed out. And you see that play there. Sometimes he settles for the three a bit too much. He's got to use his size inside, and that was a great attack by Amir Sims. Jones, the shovel, Salah, the finish. Maudo Salah, the Kansas State transfer, a grad student in his lone year for the Highlanders, his first bucket of the game. Played for that Elite Eight team last year, Kansas State, making it all the way to the Elite Eight before losing to Loyola. So he has some big-time game experience. Now out front defending Mitchell. Scara going to give a three-pointer a try. David Scara feeling it today when the Tigers need him most. 14 in the contest. Clemson back in front. That's our 10th lead change of the ball game. You could feel that three was good right when it left Scara's hand. He lined it up perfectly, shot it in rhythm. And again, he's so efficient from three. They work it on the perimeter. Hicks, best three-point three shooter for this Radford team. Not that time. And Donald Hicks playing in his first game after missing the pass three. Unable to put Radford back in front. Thomas though building this Clemson lead out to three. Eli Thomas does such a great job of not settling for jumpers. He attacks the basket every time. They were giving him that jumper but he said no. I'm going to get closer to the rim and get a better shot. And he's really good at doing that. Last time the Tigers took a lead Radford went on a 5-0 run. Hicks and the foul be called on John Newman and the Tiger freshman picking up the team's fifth here in the second half. David Scara and the Tigers trying to get a win against a tough mid-major that has knocked off an ACC and a Big 12 team this year. Scara's Trey and the Tigers are up by three. With Kelly Gramlich, Pete Hannity with you back at Little John Coliseum. Tigers under eight to play in the second half, a three-point lead. And Clemson playing a second straight game without the leading scorer, Marquise Reed. In so many ways he's missed. There's kind of a numbers comparison as to what he's done relative to the ACC. It's hard to put into words how much Clemson misses him because he does so much offensively. He's such a threat. At one point last week, he was the third leading scorer in the ACC behind R.J. Barrett and Zion Williamson. That's how much he can fill it up offensively. So obviously these young guards for Clemson has, have had to step up, but it's really hard to replace Marquise Reed when he's out with an injury. And on both ends of the court, because a year ago he led the Tigers in steals, and he was atop the charts before getting hurt late in that game against St. Peter's about a week and a half ago. Bradford out of the timeout, which probably came at a very good moment of the game for them. After the Newman foul, Jones forcing it inside, and a block will be called, and I believe it's on Thomas. It is, and that is his fourth. Eli Thomas taking a bit of a risk to try to take a charge when you have three fouls, but I think he really thought he had this one here. He's outside the circle. He keeps moving his feet. That's going to be a block every time, and credit Jones. Jones finds a way to draw contact inside. He's very creative with that, and I think he probably knew. The player that he is, he knew Eli Thomas has four fouls. Let me see if I can attack him and draw this contact. Jones off a 16.6 assist effort in a loss at Ohio last Saturday. Well, now has a dozen in this game, and he pulls his team a little bit closer. I'm interested to see how, how long Coach Brownell keeps Eli on the bench because when you're under eight right now, you're in crunch time. You can't keep him out for that long, but you need him in those final four minutes of this one. Jones gets it to roll in. Came into the game 76% from the free throw line. And now he's three out of four today. And that one knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Fields of Radford. Radford, a team that we told you they don't give it up a whole lot, about 11 a game. They force about the same the Tigers do. A little over 13 turnovers a game. Shot clock being adjusted right now. And that's what's impressive, too, about Jones. Four assists, one turnover today in 30 minutes. He does not throw the ball away. Very few unforced turnovers. And they'll tell you that Fields, number 11, just beyond the paw there, he's really their point guard. But Jones, such a well-rounded player for him. Tigers, every possession, even though there's still seven-plus to go in regulation, becomes big, you just feel like. Mitchell having a good day. No. Put back try by Thomas. By Sims, rather. Rejected by Salah. And then Sims goes up over the big man. And Amir Sims, all of his scoring has come here in the second half. 
Sims now with seven in the game. And that's one way to get yourself involved if you're Amir Sims. Offensive rebounds. A big time play inside by Sims. Wow, that is what Caleb Tanner can do. He is the all-time high school scoring leader in the state of Virginia. At Radford, he has become a long-range marksman, and we are tied at 56. And he can disappear a bit in games. He's only taken four shots, but he spreads the floor so much. You have to give so much attention to him, and then he knocks down big shots like that one. Tip that time by Jones. Under 10 on the shot clock. Mitchell looked to spin. Now feeds Scarra. Knocked around. Scarra. Wow! Beats the shot clock. David Scarra. He'd be dangerous on a game of horse with a shot like that. We've seen Scarra evolve offensively. I'm not sure we knew that was in his repertoire, Pete. The fadeaway from, from the elbow. Wow. Jones. Can't answer. Battles Newman for the rebound. And the freshman taking it away from the sophomore Radford. Trap looking things over. Tiger team that I'm not so sure they felt this game would be all that low scoring, but has had a hard time getting into the 70 point range. And now a travel will be called on Newman. Who Spun one too many times, but this game's so tight. And again, you've got to value the ball when you have it down the stretch here because the scoring has not been coming in bunches. And Amir Sims, offensive rebounds. That's how he's getting himself involved offensively. A strong play inside for Sims, who has such a big body. He has size. He's got to use it, and he did on that play. Tanner getting the attention of Mitchell. Probably the best on-ball perimeter defender the Tigers have with Reed injured. There's Hicks, another good three-point shooter. Polite. And he banks it home. And Radford has missed Polite. He's been on the bench with those three fouls. He brings a, a calmness. He's a veteran. He can get a shot whenever he wants. And that's a big play by Ed Polite. So you played, moved into the top 15 in scoring at Radford early in the game. He's over 1,200 points in his career. Only averages about 11 points a game, but he comes up with big baskets for them. 58 all. Mitchell, and he gets the roll inside. Shelton Mitchell building on his game. He now has 20 points. He's just five away for 1,000 in his career. Mitchell continuing to do it in the mid-range. He has a size advantage on these guards guarding him for Radford, so he can really pull up and get a shot whenever he wants. Fields pulls up on Sims. Good job by Newman to scrap battle for the ball. Won by Fields, but he throws it away, and Sims was right there. Sims will not get credit for a block, but he altered that shot tremendously. Made Travis Fields take a really tough floater. It's a good defensive play by Amir Sims. Sims from downtown this time. Can't get that one to fall. There's Scarra. Here Sims coming into the game at 40% beyond the arc so far today, though. Just one out of six. Trap driving inside. Good idea by the Tigers sophomore. Can't get it to go down. Here comes Radford trying to give us another second half tie. And Tanner losing the handle. Knocked away that time. Good defense out on the perimeter by the Tigers. Brad Brownell said that had to step up. And so far, pretty solid job today. Mitchell. He loses the handle. And he hits the deck. Both he and Fields going down. Give Fields credit for knocking it away. Polite bumped. And now an offensive foul will be called. Late whistle that time. And we've got an official timeout on the court. It looked like some hesitation out of Jerry Heater. That'll be the fourth foul of the game on Ed Polite. And the ball will go the other way. Scarra defending. Polite called for the infraction. David Scarra had a dozen points last Saturday. So far today, he's gone even better than that. Clemson's second leading scorer right now in this game, attack in the basket. He's really scoring from all three levels. Here's that put back from earlier on the offensive rebound. He's knocked down a couple threes. He's been good from beyond the arc. He's also grabbed, as we said, a couple big offensive boards. And then here's the charge that gave Clemson the ball back and a little bit of momentum as the Tigers lead by two, nearing the three-minute mark. Scarra has matched his Clemson high today with 16 points. He's just one point shy of his college high. That came when he was playing at Valparaiso against IU South Bend. And so 
score the opportunity with his next made basket to establish a new collegiate career high. And obviously with Reed down, others need to step up. And you see we've had 10 ties and 10 lead changes in this game. Tigers led by one at the break. Radford's led by as many as seven in the contest. Clemson's biggest lead has been six, and that came with a 6-0 start to the ball game. Dangerous pass that time. Trap, though, able to take it. Well, maybe give Eli Thomas the assist. And the Tigers build the lead out to four. Clemson very fortunate that pass was not intercepted, but a great recovery by Clyde Trapp and an athletic finish at the rim. Clyde Trapp, eight points today. Getting the start. And we've got an illegal screen. It'll go against Butts of Radford. Leroy, Leroy Butts picking up the ninth foul here in the second half against the Highlanders. Not sure where this pass was intended, but Clyde Trapp said, I'll take it, and I'll go score. And on this play, Clemson fortunate here because, look, no one was switching off onto fields. Eli and Clyde Trapp got stuck, so a big foul call there, partly because the screen was illegal, but Travis Fields was open with the ball. Tigers get a chance to match their biggest lead of the ball game or take their largest if they can knock down a three or get a three-point play on this try. Thomas inside, rolls out as he went over Salad, then he was going back up for the dunk, but foul will be called, and that'll go against Fields. Thomas has been very aggressive attacking the rim tonight. Sometimes he settles more for the floater for the jump hook, but not tonight. I feel like he has, or he thinks he has a first step advantage on many of those Radford big men. 10 fouls now on the Radford team in the second half. Fields picking up his second, so two free throw opportunity here, but that'll be the case on all fouls the rest of the way. Thomas building on another solid ball game. Now in double figures once again with 10 points. And seven rebounds. Four out of five on free throws. And he's only played 20 minutes because of that foul trouble. So if he had been out there a little longer, you'd probably seen a little more production. But I still think you're happy with Eli Thomas. 11 points now, seven boards in just 20 minutes. He's been good when he's been out there. Eli Thomas and the Tigers matching their biggest lead of the game at a half dozen. Radford, a good three-point shooting team. Polite's going to try one, and he swishes. Ed Polite, 35% beyond the arc. Cuts the deficit in half, and from long range today, he is a perfect three out of three. Radford now as a team, eight out of 14. Tigers, seven out of 23 on three-point shots. And again, what I've said about Radford all afternoon is they set their feet so well for these three-point shots. And when you can shoot the three like Radford, 41% on the season today they're shooting just 57 percent from three which is absurd they're eight of 14 but when you can shoot the three like radford can you're never out of it you're never out of a game and even though clemson was up six was feeling good radford hits one three and it's a one possession game mike jones talking to his troops eli thomas yet another double figure game in terms of points now with 11 eight of his past 10 he's been in double figures and again having injury issues during the preseason not only impacted him kind of rounding his game into form but also getting in full condition and he's been able to work himself into better shape now as he's gotten healthier and think about this too pete we've said tom without marquis reed eli thomas is most likely your best all-around player if you're clemson he's had some foul issues he's taken just five shots from the field today inbound comes to mitchell Radford. Pressed at various points in the game. Tigers do a good job getting it in the front court. Scora, contact inside, and Thomas with a follow. Good decision by Clyde Trapp. I think he wanted to take that three, but he made the right decision to make the extra pass to Scar. Tigers lead by five. Big possession for the Highlanders. Polite to Jones, not known as a three-point shooter, but he makes the tray. Carly Jones on his first attempt of the game and just his fourth made three this season. Now four out of 24 beyond the arc, and Clemson fans had to be thinking, geez, he picked now to finally make a three-pointer. And here's that extra pass by Clyde Trapp, and then, of course, you see Eli Thomas with the follow. But then for Radford, Carly Jones is open. Thomas gets stuck on the screen, can't get out there, and Jones, who doesn't really shoot the ball well, knocks down a three. And naturally, if you're Clemson, you're thinking, 
he made only three in nearly 25 it's attempts. It's not the worst thing. You're ever. not going to worry about running somebody out there once he gets behind a screen. And in that case, Jones making the Tigers pay. So back to a two-point advantage. Of course, last time here in Little John Coliseum against St. Peter's a week ago Tuesday, the Clemson team was in a knock them down drag them out game against the Peacocks out of the MAC. We know three-point defense has been the issue for Clemson so far this season. I thought in the first half they were better. Even though Radford shot the ball well, they were out, they were contesting threes. The second half, there's been a couple instances where Radford has gotten really good open looks. Number 10 team fouls against Radford, so if they foul, Tigers will get two free throws as opposed to the one-and-one one bonus. But they don't have to foul. Plenty of time on the clock, and they can just try to get a stop right here. Mitchell defended by Field. Shelton, left-hander, rattles out. No, Thomas, a great job. He boxed out two, gets inside, and now a foul is going to be called. And Eli Thomas led back to the line. That one goes against Donald Hicks. First on him, but double bonus opportunity for Thomas. Big time rebound by Eli Thomas. He was held on that initial try, and then, of course, fouled there on the floor. And in most cases, Radford might think, okay, it's all right if Eli Thomas is at the free throw line, but he's been very good today, five for six from the line. Tigers 11 out of 14 as a team. Radford on free throws, five out of seven so far. First of two for Thomas, and the lead back out to three. Thomas looks better than a 68% free throw shooter, and that's an improvement from last year, but I don't think he's hit the rim on a single free throw today, the ones that, the one that, the ones that he's made. Clemson has a team 73%. Of course, they were better than that number, which is pretty good as a team last year. But working their way back up to that good free throw shooting percentage. And once again, Thomas delivering. He'll get a seat. Keep in mind, he has the foul trouble he's been dealing with. Those were two huge free throws from Eli Thomas. So with four fouls, Thomas will go to the bench. They don't want him to have to defend. And there's another dead ball. Probably put him back in offensively. Four-point game, so a two-possession game. And you see Jones letting the ball roll all the way across midcourt so as not to start the clock. Scara with that 6'8 frame defending the 6'1 Jones. And got a foul on the floor, and that'll be the seventh against the Clemson team. And David Scara whistles for the personal foul. And on Scara, that'll be his first. Radford and Clemson both doing offensive and defensive, sub defensive substitutions as Caleb Turner goes to the, the bench for Radford and Eli Thomas back in for Clemson. Well, big moment for Jones. He's been in them so far this season. He had a decisive shot in their big win down at Texas. First win ever against a ranked team for Radford. And clutch free throw, the first of a one and one, and he'll shoot the bonus. And a chance to pull his team back within a couple. You don't want to foul there. You want to make Radford earn it. But in a one-on-one -on -one situation, if he ends up just making one of these, then I think you benefit if you're Clemson. But, of course, Jones can make Clemson pay if he makes both. And he can't get the roll. Battle for the rebound. Last touch by Polite. It'll go the other way, and the Tigers' lead remains at three. Mike and, Jones. And that makes that gamble look very smart, right? Because now Radford just with the one point. Clemson still with a three-point lead. Radford obviously needs to get a stop, but they still don't have to foul. It's just under a minute to go now here in regulation. And Mitchell saw the double team come, so he goes ahead and calls a timeout. That should leave the Tigers with one remaining. Well, you're enjoying this game on our ECC Digital Network. We, of course, go linear in August. 15 schools, one network. The ACC network is coming on August 22nd. The Clemson Tigers, Georgia Tech, Yellow Jackets on the 29th will be the first football game. That control room right there includes citizens who will be a very big part of bringing you constant quality coverage on the ACC network. Well, they've been doing it for several years now. Why shouldn't they be kept on board? For the ACC network coming in August, we look forward to that. Tigers looking forward to win number seven. It has been hard work today and still 54.9 to go before they can secure that. That's right. And now Clemson with a big offensive possession here. You still just have 24 seconds on the shot clock. You want to use as much as of that clock as possible and get a good look. And remember, Radford's in there. Clemson's in the double bonus. Radford has 11 fouls. 
So anytime Clemson gets fouled here, they're going to the free throw line. That's something to keep in mind for the Tigers. Tigers with another Big South opponent in here, Charleston Southern Tuesday night, and then the first true road game of the year next Saturday, the rivalry battle down in Columbia, 2 p.m. at Colonial Life Arena. So a big defensive possession, but also a big offensive possession from the Tigers' standpoint. Trapped to the basket, and he gets it to go up and in. What a nice move by Clyde Trapp out of the timeout. Tigers in front now by five. And we might have an uh, issue... in which the clock was not stopped properly. Of course, this stage of the ball game, after a made basket, the game clock freezes until the ball is inbounded, so they want to get that right. Clyde Trapp, I think he'd be the first to tell you it's been an up-and-down game for him. He's now 4 out of 11 from the field, 2 out of 7 on threes, but he has 10 in the ball game. He has 4 rebounds, and we take another look, and at the time the basket was made is when the clock should have frozen. I don't believe that happen if 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 it didn't it'll be just a fraction of a second and it actually here's what happened when they inbounded it they didn't start the clock i thought it wasn't they didn't stop it the clock was not properly started so they needed to get it to 46.4 and this benefits clemson because radford had to stop now they have to or clemson can set up their defense radford had a chance to go and then of course with the clock issues they have to set up a set gotta think they Try to set up a three right here. Jones knocked away by Scarra momentarily. Battle on the floor. And Clemson ball. As the last to touch it was Carly Jones. He knocked it out of bounds. Clyde Trapp with two huge plays for Clemson. The left-handed layup earlier to put the Tigers up five. And then the big defensive play as Scarra gets in on the action, gets a tip. And Clyde Trapp comes flying for the ball. And then that ball is clearly off for Adford. That's Clemson basketball. And the officials will do a double check just to be safe. Maybe the argument from Radford's standpoint is that maybe, just maybe, Trapp touched it and went out of bounds, and then Jones touched it. But this will give us maybe the best angle you can see. And it clearly, as you said, Carly Jones was certainly the last to touch it. That should not be hard at all for them to confirm that original call. I don't mind the review, though, because you want to get this, these things right. It's so important. You're under a minute. Every single call counts. And we're going to continue to look at it. We're going to give another replay of that. And it was super close. We saw Trapp touch it, and then I think that Jones was the last to touch the ball, and the, it was the correct call. His arm is touching the ball while out of bounds, so... Yes, the call is confirmed. Well, you got to think that Radford now will try to lengthen the final 37.1 of this game and try to foul quickly on the inbound. And Clemson's worst free throw shooter is inbounding the ball, which is a smart play. Great find for Sims, and he'll go right to the bucket. Tigers have their biggest lead of the game, 72-65. Nice job on the inbound. Jones. And the rejection try by Thomas, but the foul called, and Carly Jones in some pain, as you see. And Elijah Thomas is fouled out as he picks up his fifth personal. Jones hobbling as he'll get ready to shoot a couple of free throws. So what a great inbound that was to build the seven-point lead. This was a great pass by Clyde Trapp, and sometimes you're so focused on fouling, you forget to play defense. And Amir Sims wide open, and a great look by Clyde Trapp. Big second half for Amir Sims, it was nine points. Eli Thomas fouling out of the ball game. And in the contest, Thomas 15 points, almost a double-double with nine rebounds. And at this stage in the game, you're trying to make Radford earn everything. Of course, you never want to see Eli Thomas foul out. But you don't want to give Radford an easy layup either, either when your lead is only seven. And Jones, who was in some noticeable pain after hitting the deck, able to make the first free throw. If you're Radford, you almost wanted to miss and get the rebound so you can try a three and make it a one-possession game. Well, he did miss, but they don't get the rebound. Newman does. Here's Trapp, and he'll be promptly fouled by Fields.
it's interesting for Radford, we've talked at length about their big wins this year. And the fact that they came in 6-3 and three just like the Tigers, but they're on the verge of losing a third consecutive game, and they'll look up and see that they're 6-4, and four, and even though they've gotten the victories against Notre Dame and Texas, will not uh, feel as good about November, December as a lot of mid-majors would with those victories on their resume. Trap a chance to, again, make this a three-possession game if he can hit the second free throw. Their November was tremendous, right? You beat Texas, you beat Notre Dame. December has been a bit lackluster. And sometimes, you know, even for mid-majors, it's really easy to get up for a game at Texas or at Clemson or at Notre Dame. But you might not be as ready or as excited to play Ohio, and you have to be ready to go each and every night. Granted, just their third game in December for Radford, and Trapp does make the second free throw, but they have yet to get a win this month, and it looks like they're going to fall to 0-3. All three of those games on the road. A stretch of four out of five away from their home court. Inside, polite no. Battles for the offensive rebound with Sims. It looked like he wanted to try a soccer kick on it. Another foul. And Tigers are going to be able to put this one away, or so it appears, with 14.6 remaining. And John Newman now with five rebounds for Clemson. He's had some big rebounds in these final couple minutes for the Tigers. Hasn't scored that much, just two points. He's played 24 minutes, but five rebounds and a few of those coming at a really important time. Newman, the freshman out of Greensboro Day. And knocking down his free throw. On his first attempt of the ball game. Now it's three points to go with five rebounds in the contest. Polite on the rebound. Eight-point game. Fields kicking to Polite. And overshoot the target there. Rebound taken by the Tigers. Clemson will simply dribble it out. And the Tigers, a hard-fought eight-point victory this afternoon against the Highlanders of Radford. Radford had beaten just two ACC uh, teams over the years. They were trying to get their second ACC win. win. Meanwhile, that guy, Brad Brownell, win number 156 at Clemson. Congratulations to him. He ties Bill Foster, the great Bill Foster, for second all-time in wins at the helm of Clemson and Brad Brownell adding to his very good record here. I know he's happy to get this win over a good Radford team. Four Tigers in double figures tonight. David Scara, 16 points, was really good in that second half. And Shelton Mitchell helping fill that void that Marquise Reed left offensively. 20 points for him and two threes for Shelton Mitchell. Tigers improved to 7-3 and three on the season. Radford falls to 6-4 and four, and Clemson now 4-0 and oh all time against the Radford Highlanders. A Tigers team that relied on the scoring of Mitchell. Energy inside from Eli Thomas and a very good second half out of Amir Sims. The kind of win, again, it may not look pretty in the final score count, but it is a hard-fought victory, to say the least. It's always hard to get a win over a good mid-major team without a guy like Marquise Reed. I think Clemson should be pleased with how they fought tonight. Next game for the Tigers. Hope to see you here. If not, we hope to see you out there 7 p.m. Tuesday against Charleston Southern. For Kelly Gramlich, Pete Hannity saying so long, this has been a presentation of ESPN.